Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's try that again, shall we? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That was excellent. I even heard people up in the balcony. That was sweet. <laughs> it's really good to be with you today. Welcome as we gather for worship to celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Savior. My name is Pastor Paul Luther. Uh, I'm the interim pastor here. I want to teach you how to say my name because people get it wrong. It looks like butter. It's not butter. And it's not lutter. Nope. So Paul and Luter together really fast is polluter. You can thank my parents for that. Um, I've been here since November 1st and I'll be here with you until uh, another pastor is called. So probably around a year or so. Uh, I live in the Twin Cities with my wife Jenny and our five-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Annika, who thinks she knows everything, because she does. <laughs> and she uses all the words, all of them. So uh, I am so pleased to be with you tonight. And it's so, I'm so glad to see so many of you here. I'm used to seeing uh, a TV screen in front of which I'm recording something. So welcome to you. It is good to be together. Please rise for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We've turned away from your invitation to new life. We've turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who come to live among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins. And... Through our own, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Please be seated. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. 
Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear God's holy word. Good evening. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you are broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from, the time, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Okay, there we are. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news 
of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Good and gracious God, for the gift of your love come down in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. We thank you because you have decided not to be far away from us, not to self-distance, not to isolate yourself from us, but instead to come all the way down into our world, all the way down into our lives, all the way down into our hearts. We thank you that this is a gift that keeps on entering, keeps on searching, keeps on seeking us out. Thank you for your great love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ the Word made flesh. Amen. As I said earlier, it's good to see so many of you in worship tonight. What a strange time this has been. A strange year, really. Anybody ready to be done with 2020? (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Yes. Um... So, for so many reasons, so many strange things have happened in this last in this last year, and you know it's kind of gotten to us. I don't know if it's true for you. I suspect it may be, but I don't know for sure. We have, as I said, a five and a half year old little girl at home, which means we've been doing a lot of distance learning, and I do not have a teaching degree, and neither does my wife, and there's a reason for that. I should not be teaching. Well, yes, I should. Anyway, uh, never mind. <laughs> um, it's such a strange time. People are looking for signs for things to get somehow better, aren't they? Watching the news, looking in the sky, seeing what stars cross each other. If the stars cross, certainly things are going to get better, right? I mean, maybe you're used to watch it, looking at signs um, on the road. We do live in Minnesota, the, uh, where all the seasons mean road construction. On my way here tonight, today, this morning, on my way here, when I, when I drove here, um, on my way in, there was a road sign that said, End of Road Work. And I thought... When was it starting? <laughs> I didn't know. And uh, given the fact that there are, there were so many cars in the ditch, I suspected it had been for for a while, um, for a while back. And we look for signs for the weather to get better. 
whatever better means to you. It's hard to say that in an, in an agricultural community, you know, because if everybody had their way, the weather would be different every, what, two miles, three miles, whatever. It would be different for every single person. It'd be really difficult. Right now, I know that there are a lot of people who love snow and ice and cold, and so they are in their glory. I was not made for negative temperatures, and I was not made for super hot temperatures, which is why I thought living in Minnesota was a good idea. But in fact, it is always cold or hot, but wait 15 minutes and it'll change. But maybe these aren't the things you're looking for. Maybe these aren't the signs you're looking for in your life. Maybe it's not about road construction. Maybe it's not about the temperature outside. Maybe there are other signs you're looking for in your lives, you know? Like, maybe you're looking for, uh, for a sign in terms of what to do with your life. Maybe you don't know, or maybe everybody thinks they know what you should do, but that's not what you want to do, and you're afraid to tell them you don't want to do it. And yet you wonder, what should I be doing? So you're looking every which way for a sign. Maybe you're in a place where you want to go back to school, but you're not sure where to go. You're not sure how you're going to afford it. You're not sure what you'd study. You're not sure what everyone else would think. And so maybe you're looking for a sign Maybe in your household, it is hard to get along with one another. Maybe uh, you're young and you really, um, uh, you really feel like you need to be paying attention when your parents say to, to get along with your siblings, but doggone it, your siblings suck. Amen? You're all afraid to say amen, aren't you? You're afraid Santa's listening? It's okay. Maybe you live in a house with somebody to whom you're married or are in a relationship. And for a while it went really well. It was really sweet and wonderful and really brought a lot of nourishment to your life. But lately, they're getting on your nerves and you just don't know what to do. You're wondering maybe even because you're fighting more with the other person and not just yourself, you're wondering if maybe it's time to leave, time to end things, maybe put things on hold for a while. Maybe your job is always in the balance because the economy is what it is and uh, that causes a lot of fear and trepidation for you. And you're looking for some sign that everything's going to be just fine. Maybe you don't know what the future holds because you don't know what the present holds. You don't know what the heck is going on around you. And you wonder. You wonder, you know, like, how, many, how will I get through today or tomorrow? Maybe you feel isolated. Maybe you feel depressed or anxious. Maybe you feel sick inside and you just don't know how to let others in you're looking for a sign. In the Gospels, there are signs and there are wonders. In this story about Jesus' birth, there is a sign. The angels said it, that Jesus' birth is itself a sign. And this will be a sign to you, the angel said. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And this will be a sign for you. This is the first time this part of this gospel lesson has ever kind of popped out, to, pop, popped out at me. 
And I wonder if it's because for such a time as this, when we're going through such, a, such things as this, that we, we, um, we're looking for those signs. But what is Jesus a sign of? What good can the birth of a baby do, really? This is not what the people of Israel signed up for, my friends. I'm assuming we're friends here in this sermon. Uh, This is not what the people of Israel signed up for. Years and years and years before, God promised to send a a Messiah to right what was wrong, to put back what had been toppled over, what had been destroyed, what had been crushed under their feet, which included their hopes and dreams. And a Messiah was going to come in and do this. The picture of the Messiah is one who is strong and mighty and can take all things under their feet, which is all well and good. But a baby is not does not feel like the fulfillment of that. What can a baby do? It felt to them like maybe God was duping them a little bit. They had been duped before into believing a lot of people had been the Messiah. And don't you know it? Don't you know it? Everyone who came in and said they were the Messiah, people longed for that to be the case because they were sick and tired of the way things were going They had had it. They were grief-stricken, frustrated, ticked off. And so this baby shows up. The angels get all up, get all up, and I mean, they're just, you know, throwing down. They're having a party. And what difference does this really make? Several years ago, my dad's dad, whose name is Gerhardt, died. He died of pancreatic cancer. And I must tell you that as sad as I was that he died, I was a little relieved. Now, I know I'm going to hell for that, but let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I say this. My grandpa Gerhardt was the grumpiest human being on the face of the planet. I mean, so grumpy, German to the core, like he came with his family over on the boat from Germany and he was just grumpy. I'd never seen him smile or laugh, never heard him tell a joke or tell a story. He was just grumpy. Well, except for once. I was young, grr. And my grandma and grandpa were having a conversation, and I had watched them over the years, so I knew when my grandpa was in trouble. And there was one conversation in particular where my grandpa said something that my grandma didn't quite approve, and I don't remember what it was. I remember my grandma throwing her arms up in the arm and going, honestly, Gerhardt, and she stomped off. And I thought... Well, this should be interesting. She came back in the room with my, one of my young cousins who had just been born, and she put my cousin in his arms, and she said, there, you deal with him for a while. And I never knew if she was saying that to the baby or to my grandpa. I mean, was she telling the baby good luck? <laughs> or was she telling my grandpa Straighten up, old man. I want to believe it was to the baby, to be honest. Well, after a while, so first of all, my grandpa looked at the baby and seemed like he wasn't quite happy with the fact that the baby didn't do what he wanted it, the child to do. And after a while, the baby started to smile. I mean, not because my grandpa was funny, because he was not. But the baby couldn't help themselves. They smiled and even laughed. And dear God, I swear to you that I saw my grandpa for the only time in his life that I was around, I saw him smile. I did. It made me sit down. I mean, I was shocked and I was silent, which will also tell you how out of it I was because of it. 
Right, exactly. So my grandma came back and she saw my grandpa talking in baby talk to um to the baby <laughs> and my grandma took the baby back in her arms and said, I'm sorry. And my grandpa said, for what? She said, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Babies have a power to convey in an, uncontrol in an unconditional way the fullness of something they can't even grasp themselves, but they are so taken up by it. They are so taken by it. When, they're, when, they are, when they are happy, they are all in. And when they are sad, they are all in. And when they are tired, they are all in. And when they are hungry, they are all in. Except for when there's Ludafisk and then nobody's really hungry. But amen. Again, you're afraid to say amen. Um, but babies change things. And just think about this. We're here to celebrate the fact that Jesus... Christ is born for us and for our salvation, not as a fully grown human being, but as a child, as a baby, as a baby who is, as the gospel tells us, a sign, a sign of what? A sign of God's love and grace and mercy and healing and wholeness and new life, a sign that no matter what tries to hold it back, Whatever tries to isolate it, God's love and grace and mercy will not be restrained, will not be held back, will not be apportioned out only to those who deserve it, because imagine that. I mean, do you ever notice that when people say, well, you know, in order to have God's love and grace, you have to do X, Y, and Z, and, and clearly they haven't done it. Everybody's really glad to tell you who hasn't done it, because they just assume that they have. Religion sometimes is so judgmental and hateful. But this is not why the baby Jesus came into the world, to be hateful and judgmental and spiteful. Jesus came into the world to knock over those things that prevent us from experiencing God's gracious love in its fullness such that it cannot it we can't control ourselves when it has come to us even lutherans we can't control ourselves we even smile just a little bit it's quite amazing when my so we adopted my daughter 2 years ago from Haiti and so um, about a year ago, she learned, uh, she, she, about a year and a half ago, she started to talk, uh, speak English, and use all the words, as I've said. So it was getting to be Christmas last year, and so I sat down with Annika. I was going to have a really seri serious theological conversation with her, and this is what I said. I said, Annika, Jesus loves everybody. She said, No. I said, no, Annika, you don't understand. Jesus loves everybody. Annika says, no. I said, Annika, Jesus loves everybody. And she says, Daddy, he does not. I said, what do you mean? She said, Jesus only loves ballerinas. I don't know. Except she had started doing ballet. And she had... When we met her, she was in an orphanage in Haiti. My wife was her third mother in her young five and a half years of life. Now we know the story of why her mom left, left her at the orphanage. We know it was for a better life for Annika. But in a young body, to feel separation like that, to feel like you are alone and to feel like feel like you don't know what the future holds, could be scary as heck. And she was looking for signs all over the place. Will they love me? Will they accept me? Will they forgive me? 
even after we brought her home, you know, she said, um, when she'd do something wrong, she'd say, do I need a new mommy and daddy now? And we said, no. She said, what? We said, we still love you. She said, you do? We said, yeah. She said, all right. And then she went and did it again. Because <laughs> she is young, right? I think what I'm getting at here is that for all the things we look at for comfort, strength, and hope in a time that's uncertain, the one sign that is sure and that is certain is the one who unleashes upon us the fullness of God's love and grace and mercy despite what the world tells us. Despite whatever we know that's going on in the world right now, we have one hope, one source of love, one source of healing and wholeness, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, I know I'm a pastor, and you think I have to say that. Well, even if I weren't a pastor, I would still say that. Because I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in the lives of countless numbers of congregation members over the years. I've seen it in the lives of people who I've just met. Jesus comes to us in a really unconventional way, into a really unconventional world, into a really unconventional situation, and breaks everything open so that love can flow again, so that mercy can flow again, so that forgiveness can flow again, so that new life can have its way in the world and in the church and in our families and in our heads and in our hearts and in our lives. Because Jesus, doggone it, Jesus loves you. I've never done that before. I'm sorry about that. Jesus loves you. He does. Not because I say so, but because he's come here for you. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. say the Christmas Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of all things, who sent his Son as my Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by angels, worshipped by the wise men, and who lived, suffer, die, and rise again to free humanity from sin, death, and the power of the devil. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who has brought me to faith in the Christ, and by whose continuous work in my heart I am ever led to lay before the feet of Christ my worship, my life, my love, to live under him as my king, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, for the gift of your love that has come into our lives, not only as gift, but also of 
I'll put also as sign that indicates that what we see and what we know is only a portion of the way that God's love and mercy flows among us and around us and through us. Meet us where we are at tonight, Lord God. Meet us in every place that we find ourselves, our heads, our hearts, our lives, and bring your love. Unleash it that we may, by the power of your Spirit, be signs of your love in the world. Hear us, O God. We gather together tonight, O God, but we don't all have the same experience. Some are grieving the death of loved ones. Some are afraid for whatever reason. Some are uncertain for whatever reason. Some don't know what to do. So enter into each situation and bring your comfort, your strength, and your hope. Help us to trust in your love, to trust in your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Be with those who are hungry and thirsty tonight, O oh God, those who do not have a place to lie their head, those who are sitting in an sitting in an apartment or a building or a room by themselves, those who are starved, hungry for connection, enter into those places as well and let them know that you are with them just as you are with us. Hear us, O oh God. In the weirdness of this world right now, in the weariness of this world right now, O oh God, Sing your sweet song of silent night that announces such good news that allows our hearts to rest, our bodies to fall back into your hands, our lives to be guided and led by you once more. Hear us, O oh God. All of these things and whatever else we should pray, we ask trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Usually at this time, please be seated. Usually at this time we do the sharing of the peace and we also collect an offering. I want to say thank you for your presence with us today and for the ways that you continue to support the ministry and are a part of the ministry that we're doing here. Thank you for your gifts and for your giftedness. Um, I believe there's supposed to be special music, yes? It says so in the bulletin. So it must be true. Or maybe it, no? Okay. Well then, let's pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please take out your communion elements. And please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Glory to God in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are God's gifts for us, God's people. Take, eat, drink, for in them Christ is born in us today. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please be seated. rise. Though may the body and blood of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have just received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now until life everlasting, peace be with you. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Please be seated. We're going to distribute the light.
shirt handle. And please rise as you're able. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus.